Miss TMI. I'm here with your girl, Tiffany Don. She got it going on. And I have a special guest for you. His name is Steve Anderson. But before we get into all of that, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. This episode is going to be amazing. You've seen the title in the description box, so you already know you want to hear about this. We're talking about being Black and in power. Yes. So, Let's introduce Steve Anderson. So some of you may know him because maybe you've lived, you live in Shelburne or maybe you've seen him around the Toronto Perth SDA church. That's where I met him. So Steve is actually the deputy mayor for the town of Shelburne and a regional counselor for Dufferin County. In addition, Steve is a participating litigation lawyer with over 16 years of experience with the Toronto Transit Commission. I did not know that, that's amazing. Uh, and, that's many sides. Yeah, <laughs> and the recipient of numerous awards for his distinguished service, including awards for merit in 2011 for his outstanding contributions with the TTC and Citizens of Toronto. Now I could sit here and read the rest of your bio, but we're gonna post a link and you're gonna tell us all about it anyways. So let's get into this conversation. Let's do it. Awesome, so we're gonna start off, we're speaking about black people in power and it's mm. such a great and encouraging time for us. You know, recently we see Kamala Harris she is in power now. So how does it feel seeing another member of the Black community ex excel like that? Mm, I think there's only one way to feel, and that's uh, inspired, I would hope, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we see online, uh, often on social media, the hashtag representation matters, right? Yeah. Um, and so what we saw with uh, Kamala Harris being inaugurated along with Joe Biden is that in action, what it actually looks like in action and what it serves to do. And I'm sure, you know, we've all heard, um, whether in our own community or certainly those in the United States, of what that um, uh, inauguration meant for them and for young girls and young black boys as well. Now, let's not uh, ignore them, uh, but certainly for young black girls as to what is possible, right? And so for me, uh, as a political figure here myself in Canada, it was certainly inspiring to see her uh, achieve that level of success. Um, as you know, there's not many of us there. So when a yeah. uh, few are gathered, uh, we're certainly happy to, uh, to celebrate it. That is so true. Yeah, that is amazing. I, I can understand and appreciate where you're saying where representation truly matters. Because when you, tr when you see someone that looks just like you, it also makes you feel like you can achieve it just the same. When you see people who don't look like you, it's like, is this just exclusive to one race or can mm -hmm. I actually be the one that breaks that barrier? That's right. Yeah. So I want to uh, talk a bit about how you got here. What was your process like? Because I want to get to what your biggest struggle was, but until, I guess we can't answer that until we know the process. So how did you get to being the deputy mayor? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, man, a lot of hard work, a lot of prayers, a lot of faith, and uh, a lot of support. Uh, it's, um, it, was, uh, it was a challenge because, you know, we, you know we, talk, we just talked about representation and, you know, growing up in Jane and Finch, which is where I grew up, um, you know, I didn't see a lot of folks that looked like us uh, occupying these positions. And uh, even, though, even though now there are more people that are involved, a lot of sisters who are running and getting involved, um, there's still not an abundance of mentors that are there that you could actually go to, right? So uh, it was difficult first because, A, you're thinking, you know, I'm black. Are people going to vote for me? Uh, that's number one. That's a real question that you have in your mind, right? A lot of people don't talk about it, but, you know, this is real talk um, uh, that we're having here. So first of all, it's, could I actually do this? Will people vote for me? Uh, and then is there somebody that I could find who's black or racialized that could actually mentor me during this process? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I didn't have that, but at some point I did convince myself that, Hey, listen, I have nothing to lose. Uh, because to be honest with you, ladies, I was really tired of, of complaining about 
what other politicians were not doing for our community, right? Mm -hmm. And there's an old saying, well, you got to put up or shut up, right? Uh, if you want things changed, be the change that you want to be, that you want to see, rather. And mm -hmm. so for me, I was like, you know what? Here's an opportunity that came about. Uh, here's a, an opportunity for me to step in and really take the bull by the horn. And so when the opportunity came, uh, I put my hat in the ring and the, the rest is history. But uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of hard work, a lot of grind, running a full campaign, knocking on doors, uh, dealing with racism, um, which is, you know, thank God I didn't have to deal with a lot of it, but there was some. But um, getting through all of that to finally cross the finish line was certainly um, a sense of accomplishment. For sure. And, and something I heard you say is that you did not have a mentor mm -hmm. so it so in my mind I'm like well how did they how did he stay motivated like what <laughs> yeah. what did you do mm. because a lot mm. of us like you are a figure thank god for you right you are a figure that young men can look up to and young children can look up to even adults right anyone could look up to them but what is it that truly motivated you to keep going? Mm, that's a great question. And, and you answered it. You said uh, in part of your thought process, you mentioned children. Uh, and I have two children. Uh, I have a son, Devante, and a daughter, Asia. Um, and I'm a firm believer that um, you shouldn't ask your kids to do something that you're not prepared to do yourself, no. right? Uh, oftentimes, we'll tell our kids, you know, get out of your comfort zone, work hard, challenge yourself, push yourself. Uh, and for me, this was an opportunity for me to show them that things are truly possible if you are prepared to get out of your own head at times and push the boundaries as to what you believe is possible. Yeah. And so when they see it, as we talked about representation, when they see their own father doing it, uh, then it's, it's, they now know that it's not uh, off the table for them by way of options, right? Yeah. And so for me, that was the, the ongoing motivating uh, factor because uh, since I had them when I was in early university, they were the motivating factor. Not to say that I wasn't already motivated, but I became more motivated um, when I became a parent. Wow. That's wow. amazing. So how does it feel to be like a member of, I guess, for me, it's a category like you have Another level, honey. Yeah, you are, like, you know, <laughs> like, level. You've done something. Yes, you are the first black deputy mayor. How does that feel? Like waking up each morning, you feel like. Tell us, how do you feel? I want to. Uh, 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 I would say the overwhelming feeling is pressure. Um, mm. and that, I know that's a bit surprising. I, you were probably expecting me to say, man, yeah, I feel good. Like I'm just like bobbing when I get out of bed. Right. Like I'm yeah. feeling real good about being the first black deputy mayor in the town of Shelburne and Dufferin County. But it's a lot of pressure because mm. when, as we talked about earlier, when there's not a lot of you that is there, you feel the weight of the community on you. Right. Because all eyes are on you because you're the only one that's there. And so you have to constantly prove or maintain that level of black excellence that you expect of yourself and what the community expects of you. And if we're honest, we don't have the same opportunities to slip and slide and get back up. Uh, and so there's this desire to be um, perfect almost. And, you know, the analogy that I use, I said this in a, a speaking engagement recently, is for a lot of black and racialized folks, we have to um, almost be Superman or Wonder Woman in, in this situation here with you two ladies, where we're constantly leaping over tall buildings and dodging piercing bullets just to get these opportunities. And then when we finally get them, we're still wearing that cape because we want to make sure that we don't slip and slide so that others behind us uh, get that opportunity. And, I, and, and so, you know, I said to uh, some folks recently, you know, I wish that instead of being Superman, I could just get by being Clark Kent, right? Wow. Just being normal. Just being normal, right? Yeah, Clark Kent doesn't feel the pressure. He just You're goes right. into the office and does his job. But when he becomes Superman, it's right. the weight of the community and protecting the community. And that's where the real stress comes in. So, uh, of course, I feel good about the accomplishment, but there's that weight that I carry as well. Yeah, for sure. I feel like, so you just saying that, it made me think of like, you know, president, not, not 
Biden, but Obama, when <laughs> he's still the president to me, sorry. So when Obama was there, like a lot of the things that, that, that Trump got away with, Obama could not. <laughs> no, no. Now we know that. We know that. They, they could have never. Like, honestly, yeah. you, can, you cannot. And I think that's something that we, we learn as children. Like, listen to me. Yeah. You mm -hmm. may think that you can slack off just like Sister Karen. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> you cannot. And mm -hmm. I think it, it's like it's an ongoing pressure that we kind of internally put on because we know. Yeah. You know that if you are doing the same thing that somebody else is doing, it is not it and it is not going to be the same results. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You look at crimes, you look at education, you look at job opportunities, you have to have this internal um, intuition like you're going to do the best you can. Yeah. And you're just, and, and sometimes it's just, it is so much pressure. And I don't think, I don't know, do you feel like there's any, there's ever a time you can just kind of ease back? Or do you feel like, yeah, no, this is for the rest mm. of your life, honey. Buckle up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, Martin Luther King had a dream. Uh, I have one too, and which is where we, we, we don't have to feel that pressure. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I don't think we're anywhere close uh, to uh, being uh, to, at that point where we could avoid that. Uh, it's, you know, uh, <laughs> I got, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of people don't talk about this. Uh, it feels, you know, people look at you in this position and they think, oh man, you have it made, like things are going really well for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, mentally it does weigh you because every invitation, every speaking engagement, every place that you show up, you have to be excellent. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it could weigh on you mentally. Um, and, uh, you know, when there's not a lot of people who uh, understand what you're going through, uh, you don't want to show vulnerability and weakness, but you always have to be on. And, and so the question becomes, and I've been thinking about this recently, how sustainable is that before mm -hmm. your mental wellness and well-being gets called into question, right? Because it, it's just a lot of pressure. It really is a lot of pressure because there's not a speaking engagement that I don't go to. And I have many coming up this month, uh, as you could imagine, for Black History Month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how well I did two weeks ago or even the day before, I have to be excellent today. Yeah. Wow. Where, as you talked about, other people could, you know, come in, you know, half-step it, um, you know, give the regular... But when you show up being the only black or one of maybe two or whatever the case may be, you don't have that luxury. So every day I get up and I know, like just thinking about what I have this month, I was sitting here in my house earlier today thinking, here we go again. Like, you know, I got to measure up um, because that's what we have to do. But, you know, but at the end of the day, I knew what I signed up for. So I'm not complaining. I'm just, I'm just giving you real talk so that people don't understand. It's not always glitz. It's not always hunky dory. There is this element to it, but I'm thankful to God that I have the platform and I'm able to use it to inspire. And that's what really keeps me motivated along with obviously motivating my children as well. Wow, that was so well put. Yes, I have a question though. Um, along with the pressure, do you think if there were more of us within these higher power positions that it would alleviate some of the pressure? Is it because there's not a group, but there are maybe a few, one or two. So then that's why the pressure is so intense. Yeah, well, absolutely, absolutely. Because as I mentioned earlier, you wouldn't feel that if you slip up, that the door is closed permanently for somebody coming behind you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so if there are more that are there, the, the chances are uh, you feel that maybe you could maybe, you know, take your foot off the gas, as you, as you said, Tiffany, maybe, uh, maybe ease back a bit, right? You know, today I'm just going to, go on cruise control today <laughs> instead of being on, going at a hundred miles an hour every day. Uh, but so until we get to that point where there's more of us uh, maintaining that standard of excellence, mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, we're going to have to continue to deal with that pressure. And listen, and let's be honest, not every person that gets to that level takes the responsibility the way that they should, right? There are some people, uh, and we know this, when you get to the level, it's like, who, what? The yeah. door open for who? Like, <laughs> like, I'm here, and you know, some people, let me say to this, there's some people who enjoy being one of one. Some people like the introductions, and he and she is the first black and the first this and the first that. Uh, but we heard Kamala Harris, we talked about her earlier, and we remember her profound statement, I may be the first, but it won't be the last. Yeah. And so until it's, 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 it's not just quantity, it's quality. Okay. When we have a quality number of individuals that have that mindset, then you could just release yourself from the pressure. Wow, I just feel like we need a little piano right here. <laughs> yes. because really your movements today matter for the people coming behind you yeah and and it's like so last year when all the rioting was going on and you know with all the murders that were happening and the protests it's like okay the first thing i thought of was like we need um, financial mobility and we need to support. So we need to do the smallest thing as get, getting up and going to work and being so excellent at what you do and showing that those traits to our, our, those coming up behind us, because whatever we do, I know it's not going to affect, you know, my family tomorrow, but it may affect my niece who is three years old. Mm -hmm. So I have to be excellent as a hairdresser today. I have mm -hmm. to show up today because the day that we don't show up is the day that we could have missed an opportunity to be a mentor or to do something great, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's powerful. Uh, we don't do that. Our children will be left behind, right? We, we see other groups who are excelling uh, and God bless them, they are. Uh, but we have to make sure that we're doing our part so that our children... Uh, have the ability to be competitive in this space, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And not, you know, you know, the Bible says we are to be the head and not the tail. And yeah. by golly, I don't want to be the tail for anybody, Come much on. less my children. Preacher, so is that under your belt too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm giving a word on today. Uh, you know, I, I gave you a taste of my sermon for next week. <laughs> wow, that's it, amazing. It, it, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. No, it's good though, be, and I receive every single thing. Yeah. You're saying, right? One of the first things you said is your children are the ones that motivate you. If you, if I am telling my child that you should never give up, how am I giving up? Yeah. That means that they don't, they shouldn't believe anything I say because I'm not even being true to the advice I'm giving. So thank you so much. Um, we, we spoke about Martin Luther King. We spoke about you just being in the forefront and all the pressure that you're taking on. But what would you advise or what what advice would you give uh, young black men and women uh, to motivate them to keep going that that never give up type of motivation? Mm. And I want to add something before you answer, not just the keep going, but keep going in a space where you may be the only black or the mm. first black person, you know, where you have all those barriers. How do you or what advice? Mm. Do you give? Mm. Um, if you're tired of getting crumbs, then you have to do something about it. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, uh, for too long, we have been, you know, carrying up the caboose, um, and getting whatever people want to sort of sprinkle our way and being satisfied with that. Uh, we have to reach a point where we decide that that is no longer good enough. And, you know, instead of my view is if instead of getting crumbs, be in the kitchen, making the meal, you know what I mean? Uh, where you determine who you're going to share it out to. And so it has to come from a, a place where you yourself want better. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that you should get better, that you deserve better. But if you yourself don't believe that yourself, it's difficult Right. Um, you know, the old saying is you could bring a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. Well, you can't. Um, I live by, die by that. You know what I mean? So, um, so, so it has to start there first. And then what other people could do, like myself and you ladies, 
is then you could start watering that seed, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, hopefully that per person has that flame. Uh, no matter how small it is, as long as it's there, it could grow. Um, so just just pursue for, you know, man, I would tell these young girls, go and watch, um, uh, what was it, Black Panther. And, and just, just, you know, whether that was fantasy or not, but I, I tell folks, when I walked into that movie, I walked in six foot three and I left 10 feet tall because it gave me uh, a visual understanding of who we are as a people, what we're, what we are capable of, yeah. um, you know, the, the beauty, the royalty, etc. And if you want to reclaim that, you got to put in the work today. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Let the church say amen. Honestly, <laughs> you, you are so correct. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I understand that. I understand that when you see other people um, in power and you see like, I feel great. I feel like I'm among greatness right now, mm -hmm. right? But we also have to just put that into practice. And sometimes our environments, unfortunately, they don't cater to that. And so uh, mm -hmm. a side question here is, in it, what helped nurture that mindset that you have? Mm. Um, that would be my mom's work ethic. Uh, you know, watching her uh, as a, a single mother um, taking care of seven children on a factory salary, um, you know, never taking a day off, a vacation day in 20 plus something years. Uh, she made the sacrifices for me and, and my rest of my siblings. You know, oftentimes we look at our outside of our home for heroes. I mean, I had an everyday uh, hero right there in the household. So when we celebrate Black History Month, we talk about Martin Luther King and many others that are household names. Uh, but we should be mindful to celebrate the everyday heroes uh, that are making Black history that sometimes are right in our own household, right? And so for me, it started there watching her. Um, and you know, the prayers and the belief, I, look, I, I don't get out of Jane and Finch without her and the prayers that surrounded our family. There's just no way, there's just no way the, the odds were stacked against, um, you know, most people in areas like that are written off, left for dead, uh, starved of resources. Um, and you know, I, I could say it was an internal flame. Yes. That was part of it. Uh, yes, I surrounded myself with the right people, uh, even though I made mistakes along the way. But just understanding the journey, there's just no way that without God being present every step of the way that I get this opportunity to be here in front of you, being a person of influence. So, uh, you know, first thanks goes to God for allowing me to use this platform. And it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm using it in a way that uh, he would be proud of. That's amazing. Awesome. Are you planning to climb the political la ladder? Like, is there, what's <sighs> next? Like, because uh, you have my vote. <laughs> right here. Uh, <laughs> Line me up for the Christian that. Jubilee. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I, I would love to become a, a Canadian senator. In fact, uh, I just recently applied to become a Canadian senator. Senator, the federal government uh, put out applications in Ontario looking for qualified candidates, so I recently put in. Uh, and so, you know, we should never be satisfied to continue to be hungry uh, yeah. and continue to build our platform. Obviously, the bigger stage you're on, the more influence that you have. And so, uh, you know, I'm not shy to say that, uh, you know, I'm always looking upwards. That is amazing. I mean, I don't know about you, Tiff, but what I heard that really hit me was the crumbs part. You can't be satisfied having crumbs. In my head, I was like, let me get that fat and calf real quick. Okay. <laughs> wow. Crumbs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's an amazing mindset. And I feel like more of us should emulate that or take that in. You know, like you said, which I've been telling Akeem for the longest time, you can't, you can take the horse to the water hole, but you can't make them drink. I've given advices to so many people but I can't force you to take it. You know, right. when you look at me and you may say, oh, you're doing something good. And I'm like, eh, no, I'm not. But I may tell you the tips and tools. But within our community, 
I think we need to become a little uncomfortable and unsatisfied with what we have. Honestly, you took the words out of my mouth. Sometimes we don't move from where we are because we're not uncomfortable enough. And until you get uncomfortable enough to do something, then you're going to do it. Yeah. And you, you, it's like you're, some of us are so settled, right? You, you're mad, but you're settled and you're not doing anything. So you really have to get to a place where you're so uncomfortable that you're like, nah, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it well. Yeah. Mm, mm. Mm. Well said. Amazing. I'm trying to see if we have it. You are coming out with a book. And the list continues. Yeah. Um, just everything, honey. Mm, yeah, put a and, another on the screen, so you'll they'll see it. They'll see the book. Yeah, just another tool to inspire. Um, you know, I do a number of speaking engagements uh, in schools, and oftentimes I hear people say. Uh, look, you know, your story has really resonated with me. Um, you know, it's empowered me. Um, some of my friends would be like, hey, Steve, why don't you write a book? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, life would always get in the way. Mm -hmm. um, but then the pandemic hit. And even though I think we would all readily agree there's been a lot of negatives with the pandemic, but there's also been some positives yeah. uh, for sure. And that was the opportunity that I took to say, well, if I'm going to do it, the time is now. And so I was in Brampton. I was actually at my mom's place at the time. And there was a, a notepad and pen on the, on the table conveniently, I guess. And I decided to pick it up and just start writing. And once I made the commitment, um, I, you know, I just wasn't going to stop. So the book is entitled Driven to Succeed from the Mean Streets of Jane Finch to the Privileged Seats of Town Hall. Um, and it uh, chronicles my uh, journey growing up in Jane Finch, the challenges, the setbacks, the successes to, as you mentioned, becoming the first black lawyer at the TTC before becoming the first black lawyer, sorry, first black deputy mayor for the town of Shelburne. So, um, and what it demonstrates uh, for the reader is, uh, it's, it's not where you start in life, or, um, it's, it's how you decide to finish. And that regardless of where you grow up uh, and what circumstances, and I talk about my different circumstances in the book, that you too could grow up and make history, right? Um, and so it, again, it's just another resource tool to, influence our use to say um, anything is possible and it truly is because i've had this opportunity to show that it, it actually is that's amazing awesome. i'm congratulations so to our black history right here i know, <laughs> I know. What? part of the reason why i'm so glad that you accepted the call and you're on this uh, forum right now with us is because a lot of times when we think black history we think of Martin Luther King, we think of, you know, back then we think of Rosa Parks. We don't oftentimes take the time to recognize the living right now making mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing to see. And, and, you know, you're someone who people can actually reach out to right now who may want to know how did you get here, who may want to use you as a mentor or have additional resources. Whereas, you know, our other people have passed on so you can just read about them but i think it's high time we as the black community are black people who are currently making history yes and we I'm are so right. honored to have you here we are mm. excited for all the things to come i will be following you more than i was before <laughs> i really want to see what's coming next i'm I, I just I just hope I have another opportunity once the book is released to come back on your show. We can talk about it. Definitely. You will be You're at the table with the fatted calf, bro. Yes. <laughs> You're here. You are going to come back here and teach us all to stop taking crumbs and right. being in the kitchen, making the meals, and then deciding who to serve it to. There you go. There you go. We are excited for that. Teach I'm so the people. Happy. Super proud of you. So thank, thank you, so you again so much for coming on tonight. No, I, said, I, I was glad to watch. No, you're absolutely right. I was glad to watch uh, you two ladies in action. 
Um, you know, what I heard from, uh, uh, from others about this program has uh, exceeded my expectations. And so you're absolutely right. It was a pleasure for me to come on and watch you two ladies do your thing because this is about black empowerment. Uh, and, uh, you know, you ladies are providing not only myself, but others a platform to come and, uh, and share their stories and hopefully influence others. So it was, it was a, my pleasure to come and watch you two today and talk with you, of course. Thank you so, so much. Now, guys, you heard it first right here from Steve Anderson himself. Deputy, Ma sorry, the first deputy mayor for Shelburne and Dufferin County. Yes, I said That's that it. Guys, this is phenomenal. We have history here on the screen. Tiff and I have been beside ourselves. <laughs> Honestly, I almost we are so twice. excited for everything that will come from you. And as we said, we will be following you. And when is the book coming out? So the people, people can. Know. Yeah, thank you. So uh, it, uh, I'm hoping that it'll be later this month, if not uh, early March, uh, ladies. And thanks for asking. Um, uh, it'll be available on Amazon and through my website. Um, and the proceeds, uh, many of which will be going to community-based organizations. Uh, to help uh, with, you know, the boots on the ground that are trying to make a difference in the lives of our youth. So, uh, but certainly what it is, I'll certainly let you ladies know, it'll be on my social media, I'll be posting it there. And, and as I mentioned, uh, I'd love the opportunity to circle back with you guys. Thank awesome. you so much. We are looking forward to reading your books. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I had to take a break from Amazon because I was <laughs> a whole lot of stuff. Issues. But the minute your book comes out, I'm going right back on it. And I'm going to try to stop after buying the book. <laughs> Remember to your audience, hashtag no more crumbs. Hashtag, yes. Hashtag sure. no more crumbs. Guys, no more crumbs. don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. This episode was phenomenal. Thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your night. But before we go, remember, when you watch That's Just TMI, we are thought-provoking. Thought-provoking. I'm sorry. I should have told you. You have to say it with us, Steve. You got to say it too, honey. Oh, so, we are thought-provoking. No, thought-provoking. Thought-provoking. Motivational. 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 Inspirational. 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 That's Just TMI. Goodbye.